address. These are the opening hours, this is who we are, this is a map how to get to see us. And these are the sort of achievements that people found when they visited us. So, once again, I don't want to confuse you, this is not something that I am going to, to give you as a final product, but this is something that you can very much draw upon. So, so a physical embodiment of, of what you do and what you offer. If we can make this. Um, so, these are the, uh, this is recommendations for future in a nutshell. Uh, in the document that you're going to receive, the, the final uh, report, it will be actually a, a, a much longer uh, description. Uh, also with uh, expanded, expanded paragraphs on, on do's and don'ts and maybe what could go wrong. So this is only a nutshell, but since you can identify different hats and different roles, uh, then perhaps you, you have something to measure now, something to count. So for example, if, if it was difficult before to, to say, uh, to put numbers on your achievements, this is perhaps one of the ways where you could sort of count uh, uh, the, the transformations that you offer to people. Alternatively, if it's just for you, if you want to see if you are uh, efficient in what you're doing, you might as well just uh, count the transformations that have not occurred so far. So it could be both ways. You could see, okay, I think this person and this person still need some help because I can't see him transformed. Of course, I don't want to encourage you to, to stigmatize this person. I don't want you to chase this person and say, look, you haven't transformed, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, but it's a way to put a, a little bit of, of numbers on what you're doing. Uh, people develop personal skills and that, uh, and that can be uh, used anywhere else. You are excellent at doing things, but at the same time one has to be very good at communicating it. So for example, uh, you are achieving something, but that's known to you, not to the outside world. So be very specific. You have life real-life scenarios, you have real-life cases, so say, this person did that and achieved that, and that person did that and achieved that. Be explicit about your achievements. And then, um, use the knowledge to present the organization. That, um, that comes down to both applying for funds. This is very important when you, when you kind of have to, in a, in a, using a bad word, sell your image. Uh, or when you just are asked outside, so what is it that you do? Just be very specific, use this knowledge. And then you provide people with a second home that goes beyond the walls of the building. Uh, it becomes a stronger and closer community based on active citizen engagement. So this is a, this is a sort of a, this is a, a, our findings in a nutshell that you can use to, to further communicate on, on what you are. And this is revisiting my previous point, put the right vocabulary. Sometimes, uh, Pictures and quotes can do so much more than elaborate texts and elaborate paragraphs. You have so much data that you can collect yourself. You can take a picture of someone achieving something. You can quote someone being proud of himself. And this is, in, this is invaluable on the report or when you, when you, I don't know, there are local media, you could be asked to the radio station, you could be asked to the newspaper. Uh, use, use hard life examples and quotes and pictures so it's seen. And these are the kind of recommendations that you might expect in the final document. And of course, as I said, this is only a, a kind of a, a compressed version. There will be much more including what not to do. I mean, we are not very critical in this, in this document, but it's also good to be self-reflective and saying, okay, this is going great, but what might go wrong? And that is something that you might find in the document as well. So that's it from me. And I think that's it for the presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would be very happy to give floor to you if you have any questions. But since they might be in danger, I will probably pass the microphone to someone else. Hvordan føler I forhold til, så kan jeg spørge jer, hvordan føler I forhold til, at vi uh, skulle ud ligesom at, at prøve at være uh, en uh, specifik i forhold til at fortælle uh, enkelte historier? Ja, i forhold
forhold til, hvis man skal til at opklare, øh, altså, hvad en menighedsbank gør, ud fra specifikke øh, specifik historier, som, som, som sker her med hensyn til de her øh, transformationer af roller osv. Så er det, er det noget, I føler, I vil kunne gøre og gøre brug af? Ja, både det, men også mere øh, de fortællinger. Så hvis der er en, der kommer og spørger en om, hvad laver man nede i, nede i menighedsbanen? At det er noget sådan, som kan lægge væk på, at man faktisk gør noget mere, end man får en, et måltid mad. At man også ligesom har, har udviklet sig i nogle forskellige retninger. Mm-hmm. Øh, og fået nogle nye, altså sådan noget, nogle nye evner i de forskellige ting. Ligesom at du for eksempel har skiftet rolle fra at komme ud og spise mad til os. Har det lige så været for det, der har forskellige tal til det. så kunne bruge det her øh, eksempel eller det her værktøj, så at sige. Øh, hvor at i stedet for at, at sige, at enhedsplejen er ikke bare et hyggeligt sted og et godt måltid med, men at man tror, der bliver noget vækstfolks interesse, hvis man kan se, at okay, man kan faktisk opnå noget personligt øh, på flere forskellige måder. Jeg tror, at vi kunne bruge det med at fortælle historier fra, hvad der sker hernede og hvad der er sket med folk. <laughs> Men altså, der sker jo en udvikling i mig, ikke også ved at være hernede, ikke også? Selvfølgelig er jeg jo med til at lave mad en gang i måneden, ikke? Og rette toffer og sådan noget, ikke også? Øh, men men der, er mange, der er mange ting, som, som præger en, ikke? Eller som, som man sådan suger til sig, ikke? 